before today, show of hands, who had heard of the Cross Watershed Network before they walked in today? Wow, a lot right. of people. That's so exciting. Who had heard of it and would be able to tell their next door neighbor what it was? Okay, not That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It, it, it's all good. So um, my name, again, is Risa Shimoda. I work with the River Management Society, and I'm the executive director, and I'm here with Jan Holder, who is the executive director of the Gila Watershed Partnership of Arizona, and we're both pleased to be here representing the Cross Watershed Network to give you an update or to introduce you if you haven't heard it before. So it's like, oh, no, there's another organization. Why do we need that organization? <laughs> well, we do because the Tamarisk Coalition, a couple years ago exactly, right after their symposium in its wisdom and vision and ability to uh, do a great job of reaching out, convened a mini workshop that asked practitioners and rep those representing the restoration movement if we needed one, if they needed one, what did they want, what did they desire, and the result was it seemed like there was a need. So this group that's a, a large handful of folks who are largely here, if you're in the Cross Watershed Network core team, please raise your hand. <laughs> Um, other folks who are not in the room but her, who are here for the conference have been working pretty hard. Lots of conference calls and um, in-person in meetings supported uh, by the Welt Family Foundation. We're very pleased to have moved this forward. So what is the problem? You know, why is this necessary? I mean, basically what we have is we've got a whole lot of us out here in the West that are kind of floating out in the middle of the desert, not knowing what to do or how to do it and not knowing anyone that they can ask. And so that's how this was, that's what's so important about this organization, is the connection with each other that we can make. And what would this be? I mean, what we're looking at is a peer-to-peer -peer information exchange across watershed boundaries, so that we can all work together to try to achieve more in less time, and with less resources. So how would this thing work? Well, Glenn could advise David on how to on do the, oh, we'll go Sorry. Glenn could do the planning for David's uh, restoration project. We had this so well timed. There it is. Okay. And Chris could advise Kim about some swiffle habitat issues that she had questions on. And Sparky could advise Anna on some um, some livestock watering requirements, and Amy could tell, tell Glenn about the new NRCS program, and David could tell Sparky about how to better work with volunteers, and Anna could tell David about how to set up a monitoring program. So this is like good old boy network come full circle and changed with some women and not a bunch of guys. <laughs> but that's what this is. Women too. <laughs> and then the result would be, you know, if you work together, you get that kind of networking, we're better at capacity building, we're better at knowledge sharing, we're better at developing our management plans, we're better at being able to share our challenges, which is so important, and the bottom line is we're better to deal with these very large, large landscape projects that we're working on. Okay, and so why do we need it? Oh, it's faster. Basically, <laughs> there you go, it's faster. But basically, you don't have to re reinvent something yourself. There's other people out there that have done it. And not only that, but you can do it cheaper because you can build on things that other people have been doing so you don't have to spend that same money again that they've spent. And it's better because you can see what's been done, what's been proven in the past to work, and so then you'll have that to base what you're doing on. So how do we know what people wanted? And basically, we asked. We asked over 100 watershed practitioners in the um, arid southwest on um, what they were looking for, and they, were, and they told us. Sorry. And they told us they wanted a peer-to-peer -peer network connection. They wanted to be able to collaborate across watersheds. They wanted to keep, uh, you wanted to keep a restoration context for this information sharing. And you wanted something that was pretty easy to use. We wanted to work within a watershed, communicate within a watershed, with an adjacent watershed, with other folks in your region, and a little bit larger geography depending on the context. So what are you working on? A lot of people told us they were working on riparian restoration and invasive species control. That was probably the biggest um, issue. 
Um, a lot of other people are working on watershed, forest, forest, and upland health issues. After that, the next most common one was water quantity issues. After that, we had watershed health on agricultural lands. Water quality, that was also a big issue for a lot of our people. And last but not least, watershed health on urban lands. Oops, I forgot one. Riparian restoration and all of the hydrology. So then we wanted to decide how will we learn and share with, with one another? What are we going to do? So we talked about doing a watershed hosted field trip and workshops. There will be peer to peer consulting. You know, I can ask somebody else, how did you do this? A web based clearinghouse for information sharing and tools. You can look it up online. Public education, cross watershed working groups and also webinar training. So what have we done so far? Well, we have done some stuff. Um, in September, we had our first annual watershed host repairing restoration workshop. Say that 10 times, I dare you. Um, and we were hosted generously and wonderfully by the folks at the Birdie Watershed, Chip and Laura and Anna helped a whole lot. We saw 63 practitioners from the Four Corners states and California, and our feedback that Texas. we got from uh, Texas. Yeah. So um, the feedback that we got on the content, structure, you know, what we covered, how we did it was excellent. So it's fuel for repeating this for the future. And what we have also done is set up crosswatershed.net. If you went there today, you would see history, where we've been, what our plans are what the feedback has been, why we're doing this based on what we heard from peers and the hundred folks who answered the survey. And during this year, we'll be developing that uh, URL into an interactive website that has the resources, that has specific places to go. And it, you know, to some degree, I think it will be, there'll be a social aspect of it, whether it's a forum or a Facebook group or whatever that's connected. But well, it'll be better than just Googling stuff on your own. It'll both be co collected in one place because of the content, nature of the content, and also have resources that are personal. So I want to say, if you're interested in XYZ topic, here's a website to go to. There'll be a person to go to, or an organization <coughs> where they have really had a lot of success in some type of activity. So that'll be better than Googling with it, I would think. So how can you get involved? Um, basically, you don't have to do a whole lot. You can find somebody who's got a sticker, just like me. And you can say, how can I sign up? I want to be part of the Cross Watershed Network. Um, basically, there's no big requirements. You know, you don't have to have 45 different degrees to belong to the Cross Watershed Network. Um, if you are a practitioner in any way or want to learn more about what you can do, you can become a member. Um, or you can look at the website, which is up and running right now. It's just, again, it's a uh, website that's being further developed. It's www.crosswatershed.net. You can also sign up uh, on our email list for, by contacting Daniel Oppenheimer, who's right back there. And there's his email address. Uh, you can also participate in our upcoming 2004 workshop. And you can connect us with your networks. We want to know who else you think needs to belong to this. You know, I mean, I know Arizona, at least I know Southeast Arizona very well. I know who needs to be connected to this network. And they're all already understand that they can be part of this and that they can do more. And it doesn't matter if you're an agency, you can be an organization, um, it doesn't matter what you are, um, you can belong to this. Just an individual who wants to work in their neighborhood. Um, and then also, our slogan, which is healthy watersheds through healthy partnerships across watershed network. And I do want to thank the Walton Family Foundation for, for providing funding for us from 2013 uh, through 2014. That's it. Do you have any questions? No? So everybody's, is there anybody here who hasn't joined the Cross Watershed Network yet? Who wants to belong? See, we've got all these people. I'm sure there are questions. There's probably a question. Anyone? Questions? So if we, oh! <laughs> <laughs> So I see on your list you're mostly organizations, but I'm wondering if you're targeting ranchers or any other uh, community members. 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of farmers and ranchers in our area that I think are going to be want wanting to be a part of this as well as time goes on. Um, anyone who's on the ground or is just interested in it can be a part of it. So how, are, how, are you, how are you reaching those folks? And I, I wonder how many ranchers actually do conferences like this. Well, there's, I don't know if there's any of them out there right now, but I deal with farmers and ranchers every day, and my family's in ranching as well. So uh, a lot of our, just our neighbors are concerned about what's going on, and they want to be part of it. And to speak to the workshops that we've been planning, um, a lot of recruitment locally was happening too, to try and get local communities and um, people, private landowners, public land managers, to the workshops in person. So there's definitely a lot more we could do, and we'd love to get your ideas on that as well. We all need to reach out in our own neighborhoods. You know, I mean, I certainly know in, in southeastern Arizona, you know, I know who might want to know more about this, but we're all going to have to look in our neighborhoods and see. And what's unusual about this is pretty much headless. You know, there is a, there's a group of people who've been working on developing a network, but a network is a network without like the top person or the person who owns it. It's not, it's owned by a one, two, three, and it isn't at least now. So the, the strength of being able to be a good networking system is to ask somebody who's been complaining to you about something about not knowing or wants to share information with somebody else. So it's all about trying to Something and we're going to be having a workshop tomorrow at, what time is the workshop tomorrow? 1045. After the morning break. After the morning break, where we're going to be going into subjects that you're all, you all are interested in talking about. Um, and there's a sign-up sheet out there. If there's something uh, that is not on the list, please add to it. Um, and we can certainly address things that you all want to talk about. Um, becoming a member is free of Cross Watershed Network is free. Um, and so what I heard.